What in the world would it do if I didn't have that in my heart? Good morning, y'all. Good afternoon. Good evening, and welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. Uh, I thank God this morning for the gift of song. And I think every day that I wake up with a song in my heart, I know that I'm alive. So um, I just want to thank God for the gift of song. And for everybody who sings a song, who writes a song, who listens to a song. God bless you all this morning. Keep your um, energy healed. Um, don't let that make you too high and too low. Remember, this is a battle for your soul. This is a battle for your mind. It's a spiritual warfare. And um, those of us who know we are actually the spiritual and the moral compass of the world. I ain't trying to say religious. But when we tap into our spirituality... And we know that we got to get through this. Okay, so I want to give a shout out to each and every one of y'all this morning. Good morning, Tracy. Um, I haven't talked to you in a minute, so I got to give you a call. Good morning to all of you out there that are going through something today. And when you turn around and see stuff like this, it doesn't help. So I got to bring it. Okay, and it's an article from the Washington Post, you guys. Um, about y'all president, Donald Trump. You know, I really don't want to do too much with him, but with Kung Flu thugs and our heritage, Trump leans on racial grievances as he reached he reaches for his campaign reset, right? Okay, listen to this. He referred to the disease caused by the novel coronavirus as the Kung Flu. He called racial injustice demonstrations, demonstrators thugs. He attacked efforts to take down Confederate monuments as an assault on our heritage. And in an anonymous hypothetical, he described a very tough hundred breaking into a young woman's home while her husband was away. Wow. President Trump has long used, has long used his uh, raunchous out rallies to roll test potential campaign themes and attack lines, right? And while much attention on his Saturday night appearance in Tulsa focused on sparse uh, turnout, it was really his first rally since the pandemic ended the mass gatherings. Trump's litany of racial offensive stereotypes sent a clear signal about how he tried, how he's going to, how he plans to try to revive his flagging campaign. All. The race card. Play the card for the dummies. Play the card for as long as we can keep distracted. As long as we can keep gaslighting. Can't y'all see it? Can't you see it? There are none so blind as those who refuse to see because they know that he knows that 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 that, that um goes to the very primitive nature of us, not our higher intellect. Okay, it goes to the most primitive instinct in nature of us. And that's what he's appealing to. Um, even at, the, at, at a moment of national reckoning over race and racism, Trump demonstrated the extent to which the final four months of the 2020 election would build on the darker things. 
of his previous campaign and notable for its attacks on Hispanic immigrants and Muslims. We can see him raving up for that right now. I mean, if you want to save your heritage, if you want to save that beautiful heritage of ours, we have a great heritage. We have a great country. He said to cheers, using a phrase often used to defend Confederate statues and regalia. Four years ago, Trump's presidential bid uh, put a harsh spotlight on the still potent politics of white racial grievance, a strategy that felt out of time to many in the established means, wings of both parties who did not believe Trump could capture the Republican -led nomination, let alone become the damn president. Okay, um, a, At campaign rallies across the country, Trump was speaking broad strokes about a divided country um, at risk of invasion and all sorts of other stuff, which struck a chord among the voters who would eventually become the man's base. You know? So they're not the head on the Sphinx, they're the lower part. Um, you can say what you will, you don't have to like it. Anybody who in my opinion, aspires to be like, aspires to think like, aspires to um, even have a conversation like Donald Trump. has got to be a little um, off, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? He's off. And I don't care how much money he has. I don't care how much he steals. I don't care how much his dad gave him. It does not make him a man. It does not make him an intellect. In fact, he's a buffoon. But today, amid an emerging movement against racism and police brutality, the president rhetoric of race is increasingly out of step with the polling. It's just uh, kind of out of step. You can only go on that crazy shit so far. You can only go on that. You know, every day we've been dealing with that for like the last four, three years. Think about it. Almost last four years, we've been dealing with um, being on the edge and walking on eggshells. And this has been the, um, this has been the recipe for Donald Trump's campaign. And how we have, at least a, a great percentage of us, white and black, have felt while he's in there. Nobody wants to be at war every single day unless you win war. And then if that's the case, you probably would have joined the army or navy or any one of the great uh, 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 services, armed services. You would have joined them. So you can fight. That's what they do. But to sit back and every day have your nervous system um, being uh, um, out cold and just taken out of alignment is a major problem. Okay, and Donald Trump has had that uh, this presidency, this administration, William Barr, Pompano, all of them liars and thieves and bandits. Um, uh, who wants to even raise their children to even look up to these individuals? A lot of people say, I don't even let my children listen to Donald Trump at all because he's a liar. And I feel that way. My grandbaby doesn't. We teach our children not to lie. So, mm -mm. it's like he. This is not comfortable for most people. Okay? Culture wars, enemy, and his core supporters, it's unclear if such racially infl inflammatory messaging will continue to res resonate, even with the white suburban voters, especially women, amid a national conversation about racial uh, and uh, systemic structural racism. Um... There is not a more successful political strategy in the history of American politics than the Southern strategy. I mean, this is what it is. It's the, it's the ignorant. The lowest level appeals to the lowest level of us. This ideal of pitting poor whites against African Americans and tribalizing our politics. When Trump says he's going to give you back your country, he's playing to that racial animosity and to that fear, said Cornell Belcher a Democratic pollster who has done extensive research on, res uh, on racial division. 
What's different today, you may ask? What's different is today is the upward of 70% of Americans think racism is the number one problem in America. Trump has repeatedly struck racial divisions during his presidency, but in the lead up to this year's campaign, he and his aides have intended to emphasize much of their message on the national, on the nation, uh, booming economy. That's what they want to emphasize right now, because I mean, there's nothing else for them to go on. Then came the pandemic and the steep economic slide, effectively thwarting a major piece of his political strategy, because he got none. The Tulsa rally itself generated a race-related tension long before it even began. The president delayed his first major campaign event since the death of George Floyd, sparked the racial uh, injustice protests around the country amid complaints that it was initially scheduled for Juneteenth Day, which celebrates the anniversary of the day that more than 250,000 enslaved people in Texas received news of their freedom in 1865. Local activists were doubly outraged that the event was taking place near the site of the 1921 Tulsa, Oklahoma massacre in which a white mob destroyed hundreds of black owned businesses and in the home, uh, I mean, and homes in a community in what we call Black Wall Street. It was a rare concession for a president who has in the past shown a propensity to dig in when he's challenged. Okay. So, you know, he figured that would be bad for the voters if he dug in. He know he's losing. So he had to figure out something. 